Alright, so I'm here with James Gosling at the JCP 15th anniversary party, the founder of Java. And we were just recently in Hawaii, well, not recently, about a year ago, yeah. um, hanging out and checking out your wave gliders. So what's transpired since I was out there? Um, a lot of testing and debugging and um, stuff is now you know, pretty damn solid. So, so do they, they do the fancy circles around the, the boats that you were trying to get working? Yes, that now is, is, is rock solid. Um, nice. And how, how about the, the maneuver where they, um, when they get, I think it's tangled, the tethers get tangled? So the, the, the untwist? Twisted. Yeah, untwist. yeah, you were there for the very first test of, yeah. of the untwist, and that actually worked. Okay. Um, and that actually has been working just fine ever since. Cool. So uh, whenever the boats get tangled, you can get the, the would they automatically do it, or you give them a command? So well, so, so the, the untangling part works really well. The part that doesn't work really well is the detecting. Uh, so we um, we currently do detection by looking at the at the compass to see whether when they um, twist around. The problem is that there are lots of things that can confuse the compass. Yeah. So if you if you've got a compass and you flip it on its side and flip it back again, it can do what looks like a, a, a 360 spin. And even you know the modern, you know high-tech MEMS compasses will do that. Um, okay, so <clears throat> the compass detection isn't really flawless. Yeah. So if if, if it gets caught by the wrong kind of wave, yeah. it, it, it it will think it's got a twist when it's really just just fl got flopped over by a wave. Got it. Okay. So we've got a got a twist detector that is um, somewhat unreliable. Well, it sounds like you got. Twist detector, and then you use the manual intervention to figure out whether it's actually twisted or not. Yeah, yeah. It's not twisted. Cool. So it seems like it's going very well. Yeah. So we've 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 been um, we actually just 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 this morning I was in this marathon meeting to go through all of the all of the issues, and it was like, are we clear to ship? You know, is it is it sort of time to call general availability? That, that so, meeting so was... Where can, I, where can I go and buy one of these? Uh, Liquidar.com. <laughs> okay. So yeah. stop on the site, click, put in my shopping card, and then I can... If, 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 if only. Yes. If only. They're, 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 they probably max out your credit card. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that, 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 that much machine titanium doesn't come cheap. Yeah, yeah. I remember you telling me just the... Connectors, the waterproof connectors that you use to connect things are quite expensive. To yeah, the you know, you know, you know. So, so, you know, everybody has like little, um, you know, 15-pin connectors. You know, they cost a nickel at fries. You know, ours cost like 20 or 30 bucks, but you know, they're 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 wet, mateable in salt water, and and they'll survive. You know, you know, you can plug them in. Submerged in salt water, they they work correctly, and they'll keep working for years, wow. which is uh, you know it's just just crazy material stuff. So, if I remember correctly, the wave flyers were running Java embedded. Yep, yep. It's the Oracle Java embedded VM. It's been as solid as a rock. Okay, and when we talked about this before. I think. Current work you're doing is almost uh, a lot of this stuff is the sort of embedded work you originally envisioned Java when you were um, initially working yeah. on the language and the design. Yeah. Yeah. Although at the time we were, you know, when Java was first done, it was all about, you know, televisions and VCRs and such. I mean, this is like that was in like 1991, 1992, quite a ways ago. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is sort of the same thing, except it's wrapped in titanium and salt water. <laughs> nice. So uh, just for folks who don't know the, the history of Java, can you, like, give us a little bit of the early years of Java and kind of how it got conceived? Um, well, we started off as this little, little project at, at Sun at sort of the end of 1990, the very beginning of 91, to kind of look into sort of things that were interesting 
and um, you know, sort of happened on this this whole embedded world. There's this whole universe of places where people were using computers that uh, were sort of outside the the regular computer industry. So we spent a lot of time looking at that. Uh, people who were building, um, you know, the, the really primitive cell phones, um, elevators, electric uh, locomotives. Programming language of choice at the time. Oh, it was awful. I mean, the way that people were programming those things. Um, if you were really, really, really lucky, it might have been C. Um, most often, it was assembly code. And and you know the you know there's all these they had all these issues with the like the reliability debuggability of their software um, everything took an immense amount of labor to create which put a real cap on the sophistication of the software that they could build plus which you know even minor changes to their system and they'd have to rewrite everything. You know, if, uh, you know, like, like, like they, they always wanted to change their minds about the CPU. But if you've handwritten a bunch of assembly code and you change the CPU, then... Yeah, no, I mean, you, you introduce, at the very least, a huge porting effort, at the worst, a lot of bugs and a reset on the project. Right, right. Um, and these people were starting to connect to networks, or at least think about connecting to networks. and. I spent a lot of time in in '91 talking to people in some of these companies who were starting to do networking, and they were sort of inventing their own ways to do networking. And and it was really this 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 sort of tragic comedy because they were they were doing things that that people had tried like 20 or 30 years ago, and they just didn't work. And it's like you know it, it's okay to be doing new interesting things that might fail. But if somebody's already done the experiment and it's known to fail, don't don't do it again. Yeah, no, prior doing a little research into prior art might help you out. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it was a really interesting period because we were sort of cross fertilizing between different different industries. And you know, in the in the in, in, in that time period, computers and and like ordinary humans didn't mix. Right, there were no, you know, desktop publishing was a very rare thing. Um, you know, people still use typewriters. Um, and now they hardly remember what they are. Yeah, well, we can't help but remember because our keys are all slanted funky to make room for the, um, the arms in the typewriter. <laughs> yeah, well, no, they're... they're, they're yeah, but it's more to like not blow out your uh, your tendons. But yeah, perhaps. I mean, it's the flat square ones that will kill you. Yeah, different design constraints if you're going to design a keyboard. Yeah. Versus yeah. In typewriter land. Yeah. So, what's your what's your feelings about the um, the introduction of the JCP? How did that change um, the Java development? Well, I, I thought it was pretty wonderful. Um, I mean, in the in, in the early days, you know, one of the things I believed in really strongly was all this all the sort of verbiage about interoperability, interoperability, and um, you know, you can talk about it, but as soon as you start getting sort of like, like major industry players like IBM and Microsoft and Oracle participating in something like that, you can't just do it as, as like a bunch of friends chatting. It's got to be a little more disciplined. You've got to have, uh, you know, you've got to have records. You've got to have, you know, some sort of level playing field, some way for people to know that, that you're actually playing fair. Right, it's it, you know it's it's the difference between um, you know playing playing soccer with rules and just going out there and whacking people freeform, <laughs> right? Um, and, and 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 having having a structure so that the, the people a knew we really really cared about interoperability 
and working for everybody and that there's kind of a level playing field that nobody had an advantage. Yeah, so that makes sense why the JCP was kind of founded independently. They were given a lot of autonomy yeah. outside of the role of Java development. Yeah, and you know, a, a lot of it was because the the a lot of the companies that we had partnerships with just didn't trust us. Yeah. And you know, I think we were actually pretty trustworthy. Um, but you know, they they, they they have to have some kind of framework to, to bound that belief. Yeah. I mean, there were there were some people that, that never believed that we were trustworthy despite the JCP. Well, um, I mean, maybe they didn't doubt you as a person, but perhaps they were concerned that maximizing shareholder value for your company wouldn't be in their interest long term. Yeah, well, who knows? Right. <laughs> but, you know, folks like that, you'll never make happy. Yeah. Um, but, but somehow you were able to come up with a compromise, which kind of brought them to the table. At least. Yeah, brought them to the table and g gave the food fight a place to happen. Yeah. Gave the, the, the disagreements and nervousness a place to air. Um, you know, there's been a lot of tur turbulence in the JCP. But, you know, given that, that almost by definition, when you have a, a, a community that's, that has a large component that are, are big industrial concerns, all of whom are dedicated to the death of each other, um, you, you know, they're, they're not gonna be happy and friendly. Yeah, everybody has a conflict of interest, right? So, so, so conflict is kind of the name of the game. And, and the JCP is really a, a framework for managing conflict. What do you think one of the, what would you consider one of the biggest successes of the JCP in its history? Keeping everybody together. Um, I mean, it's, you know, the, you know, the, the only real um, party that, that, that really fell out of it was, was Microsoft. Um, Apple was never really in it. They were kind of weird. But then, then a a Apple is not a get-along kind of company. Um, but, you know, the fact that, that, that companies like IBM and Oracle, who, you know, at some CEO to CEO level, profoundly hate each other. But they're still able to... And they're still able to work together. Yeah. Yeah, and produce competing products to a standard where you could actually, as a developer, kind of choose your platform for right. competing concepts. Right. Cool. Right. So, any final thoughts or words you want to leave with the folks here in the party? Um, I'm so happy to be a, a Java user. Uh, <laughs> it certainly makes my life easier. Uh, the whole right once run anywhere thing, I'm pretty much stretching to the limit. Yeah, yeah. Um, right once run anywhere in the world. Let's see. Well, and, and you know, I, I, you know, this this control system for this wave glider, you know, I run it. I run exactly the same software embedded in the wave glider on my laptop for debugging in the cloud to run simulations. Nice. Um, and it all works. Um, and the fact that I can go from from one VM to another, one CPU architecture for, to another, um, you know, I, I run exactly the same code on on ARM and x86 continuously. I I'm personally almost completely unaware at a professional level with the distinction between ARM and and x86. Well, well, if you could, we're we're actually um, doing a new embedded board, or hoping to do a new embedded board. And uh, you know, one of the things that's difficult about the about the ARM world is you can't just buy an ARM processor and solder it onto a board. Uh, you pretty much have to buy a complete package unit because if you go to um, Qualcomm or, in, or NVIDIA and say, hi, I'd like to buy, you know, a hundred Tegra chips, yeah. um, they will laugh at you. 
you know, there just aren't enough digits in the order. Um, and, and so we have to buy embedded boards with them on them. And, you know, for us, it's a struggle to find the, the right embedded board that we can adapt. And it's like da 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 So the world gets somewhat messy. Okay, so you guys are actually looking at possibly designing your own embedded boards. And yeah, well, we, we, we have a current one that's got a TI OMAP 6000 series processor on it. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a... It's a pretty ancient arm, um, and we need, a, at the very least, we need a, a much more modern processor. Um, and if there was a MIPS board with the right characteristics, um, that would work for me. I mean, the, 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 one of the things about the MIPS universe is that the, one of the things that's kept them alive is the um, sort of embedded harsh environment world. Um, oh yeah, that sounds kind of similar. So right, they, they they do a lot of like automotive work. Yeah, um, uh, and I, I think routers and there's a whole class of devices which are pretty much dominated by MIPS chips. Yeah, so might actually be a good choice for us. Yeah, but we're just starting to look. All right, cool. Well, I I know that you probably already have the book and the sticker, but you're welcome to have one of each again. Yeah, I I I, I think I'm fully equipped. <laughs> And thanks very much for joining me for an interview here at the JCP 15th anniversary party. Well, thanks, and thanks for doing all your night hacking tours. And yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, keep the motorcycle it. polished. <laughs> Alrighty.